Hey there, Mr. Myers is here, and I'm going to go over with you uh, the reverse chain rule in this video, and then the next video I'm going to talk about use substitution. So basically the reverse chain rule is like, you know, we're doing the chain rule in reverse. So if we're talking about antiderivative. So what I want you to do is for 1, 2, 3, 4 here, uh, try to do these on your own, and then come back, and I'll put up the answers for these. So you'll notice here that um, the 5, when you did your chain rule here, and you multiply that 5 here because of the derivative of the inside, um, you had that 5 in your integral. So that kind of was, uh, it was like the hook on. It's the derivative of the inside function, or the baby, the, the baby part of the function. Um, and that derivative of the inside, when you take the derivative for cosine, the, or I'm sorry, the derivative of sine, the derivative of the inside function is going to be 5. That's got to be hooked on so that when I do take the derivative, I have that 5, you know, because, you know, we're doing the antiderivative. So we're doing... Um, the derivative of this is going to be equal to this, so we've got to have that 5 in there so that when we go backwards, we can do the, the sign, so that when we do the derivative of this, we get, we get this, right? So I guess this, 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 this a lot. Um, I should be saying this and that, this and that, but um, basically the derivative of the inside is your little like, your baby function. You can figure out what that is just by looking at the inside, uh, um, quote unquote inside of whatever that function. Now you could, um, you could make these rules. And basically, it looks like this. So we've got all these rules here that we, that we, um, you know, we can make them into basically U-form rules or U-substitution rules. Oh my God, guys! I I think there's a swarm of flies in here right now. You can't see it, but there's like, they're just flying all over me. Um, <laughs> I'm swinging my hands all over the place. So basic idea, guys. Here is you're using the power rule like we normally do, and any other trig rules that we normally do, and we're just thinking about what is uh, what's the baby function? What's that function that we could do? And, and really what you're going to do here is whatever that function is, you've got to hook it on in there somewhere inside your, your graph or inside your integrand. So what you could do is, look, let's look at what the inside function is. The inside function is 3x, okay? 3x minus 1. So if I took the derivative of this, the derivative of the inside function is 3. So I've got to put a 3 i got to put a 3 inside here as my hook on. You know what? I'll use a different color. I'll use red. You can really see that. And see, there's my hook on. And when I do that hook on function, I need to make sure that I, whatever I do here inside, i gotta, I got I to gotta be able to cancel that guy out outside. So if I multiply a 3 in here, I'm really... I got to multiply a one third so that the one third and the three kind of cancel out. But now I have my hooked on part there that'll allow me just to take um, the the power rule of integration. All right, so I'm going to go and do the power rule integration. This is my in so I'm just going to take three x minus one raised to the eleventh power, right, and then divide by eleven plus c. There we go. All right, but we got to add that little thing in there because then when we took the derivative, you know, we're going to have that 11 come out. And then we're going to take the derivative of the inside, which is going to be that 3, and that 3 is going to be right there. And we got to get that one third to cancel out, okay? Let's try the next one here. So what is my hook on here? Well, um, you notice that this right here, the derivative of that is 3t squared plus 2t. Well, look, that is this. So this right here, that right there is my hook on. So I'm going to use red. Okay, there's my hook. So really, I'm going to say this is to the one power right here. And I'm going to go ahead and go t cubed plus t squared raised to the second power divided by 2. So I'm using the, the power rule for integration. All right, let's take a look at this next one here, number 7. And, whoa, moving around here. Um, number seven, I'm going to change this to the integral of 6x squared times 4x cubed minus 5 raised to the 1 half, negative 1 half. So what do you think is the inside function? Well, this right here is the inside function. So what's the derivative of that? The derivative of that's going to be 12x squared, right? So I already got 6x squared. So what I need to do is I need to multiply this by 2. Okay, and then there would be my hook on. 
Well, if I multiply by 2, then I got to multiply by half outside so it'll stay even. Or it'll stay uh, balanced. There we go. That's the word balanced. Okay, so now that I balanced it, I can just go ahead and do the power rule for integration. And I'll add 1 to my negative 1 half to give me positive 1 half. And I'll divide by 1 half plus C. Don't want to forget this 1 half that I have out here. So multiply 1 half. I forgot the one third over here, too, guys. One third in the first one. So then these one halves cancel out, and I get 4x cubed minus 5 raised to the one half power plus c. All right. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more examples here. So now this one might look like we have, but we don't have any hook because if we do a derivative here, we're going to get 3y squared. I don't have that anywhere. So if I have a polynomial of squared, I'm just going to multiply that. <clears throat> Jeez, I nearly swallowed a fly. I don't know why. Oh, the fly. Oh, my gosh. Folks, I'm going to have to give up on these flies soon. <laughs> plus 2y cubed plus 1. And I know that my students are out there laughing at me. I know you guys are laughing at me right now. 1 7th y to the 7th plus uh, 2 fourths y to the 4th plus y plus c. All right. All right, let's take a look at this one. What's the inside function? The inside function is 4x, right? So the derivative of that is going to be 4. So I need a 4 to hook on here. I need a 4 to hook on here and a 1 fourth to make sure I stay balanced. So then I'm going to take what's the antiderivative sine? The antiderivative sine is negative cosine. 4x plus c. You could always check to see if I do the der derivative of my answer, will I get what's inside? All right, let's take a look at this next one here. Well, what's my hook here, guys? What's my hook on? Well, um, my inside function is theta squared. So if I took the derivative of that, that would be 2 theta, right? So I have a 3, but I really need a 2. So what am I going to do? Well, I could... Um, let's take the, what we'll do here is we'll take the 3 out and we'll do this. Let's see if I can do this right here. So what I'll do is I'll take the 3 out and then I will take and put the 2 in and then put a 1 half out. So now we've got our hook. Okay, so we're going to have three halves. The, the antiderivative cosine is sine theta squared plus c. All right. All right, let's take a look at one more here. So which one are we going to do? Well, notice here this is sine x. This is really sine x squared, right? The derivative of sine is cosine. So I already have my hook. It's right there, there's my hook. So it's already there. So all I have to do is use the power rule here. And, and I'm going to have sine x cubed over 3 plus c. All right. So that's the reverse chain rule. You know, I use these little hooks here, but it's called the reverse chain rule. Um, and this should, uh, this should be, you know, this should work out for you. Okay. All right. Uh, that's it for this video. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.